to keep the definition of this topic as simple as possible, estimation is nothing more than a forecast measurement. I keep this description very general because it is much more pervasive than you think. Let me give you some examples. Have you ever posed the question, how far is that away? Or how heavy do you think it is? Depending on the activities that you're involved in, we tend to think of the subject matter in a certain way. Remember in week one when I listed creative thinking as being one of the attributes expected of a BA? Well, I would like you to look at the subject from a different perspective. There are, of course, different ways that we can perform estimation. And please don't look at this data as anything more than a glorified list of different approaches as we could set up a course alone on this subject matter. As usual, we've set up various reference materials on the different methods, so feel free to go take a look or even better, try different methods out. Through experimentation, you can come up with different ideas and approaches to perform your business analysis activities in a much more efficient manner. So, let's get started. The first approach I'd like to describe is called analogous estimation. Basically, you take a similar endeavor and you use it as a benchmark in judging how long your task may take. The end result of your estimation under this method is called a rough order of magnitude, or Rome. Another name for this approach is top-down estimating. And this moniker tells you a lot about how you approach it. The next element we'll look at is called a parametric estimation. Here you use historical data, so the same exercise you've performed already, plus some other variables that are important to your initiative to come up with your estimation. On paper, this is seen as being the more accurate way of estimating, say, comparison to analogous. The real question is whether you truly have enough information to ensure that the estimate is that accurate. Another question I would raise is whether the time spent in coming up with the estimations is reflected in the accuracy of the estimation per se. I'll cover this aspect more in detail within the crowdsourcing video lecture. We said that the analogous approach is considered to be top-down. Well, if top-down is one, of one approach, then it shouldn't surprise you that bottom-up is an alternative. Here we look at what should be produced, the so-called deliverables, and roll them up to get a total for, the, for all the activities and tasks. By nature, it is easier to estimate smaller items than larger ones. The next item we'll be looking at is called rolling wave. This method makes the assumption that the more you know, the better your estimate will be. In our next video lecture, we'll be looking at a concept titled the Cone of Uncertainty, which talks precisely about this concept. The intention is to continuously revise your estimates based on the improved data that you have. Very often, this term is used within project management in looking at the phases of a project, looking to perform a detailed estimation once you've finished the previous phase. The three-point estimation has different variations, and we'll cover them both here. The basis is the same, though, even if the approach is different. We start with, one, the most optimistic estimate, or best-case scenario, the most pessimistic estimate, or worst-case scenario, and then lastly, the most likely estimate. On to the different approaches. The first one I'd like to go ahead and cover is called the Delphi estimation. There are several variations on this process, but they all include individual estimates, sharing the estimates with experts, and having several rounds until consensus is reached. So what do we do with this data? More often than not, we apply a technique called PERT, which stands for Program Evaluation and Review Technique. The formula we will use is appearing on your screen right now. Let me give you a description. So you take the most op optimistic estimate, plus four times the most likely estimate, plus the most pessimistic estimate, and you divide, it by the total, you divide the total by six. That's it. You'll find this model used in many, dis in many disciplines, by the way. The last example for this video lecture might be the most obvious one. It's called expert judgment. And basically, you ask those people who have performed such tasks in the past what they think. 
usually they'll you'll ask various experts and come up with a con to a conclusion. Of course, all these approaches are not mutually exclusive, so you can try them all out on your own on own assignments. Really, the sky's the limit. Thanks for viewing. <laughs>